आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा Are we? Asked Abhinandranath Tagore's father. What makes us all Indians, in spite of our differences? Asked the grand uncle of M. F. Hussain. K. C. S. Panikkar's grandfather wondered, what thoughts and emotions do we all share? Manjit Bawa's great grandfather wanted to know why land. on which his forefathers never strode is now regarded by him as his own country where are the points from which we started in our march to be one asked shobha brahma's grand uncle All their questions relate to a search for an identity as one people, as Indians. The search led them to our cultural heritage, the living art traditions of India's far-flung villages. impressed our ancestors by their rich diversity a diversity through which ran strong strands of unity similarities in belief and practices provided the focal points historians have called the search and the discovery of identity as a people cultural nationalism cultural nationalism preceded and ultimately formed an essential component in the political struggle for freedom and post independence nation building the development of painting and sculpture in modern india has been intimately linked with this quest for identity and discovery of common cultural roots the tagores of calcutta were among the earliest intellectuals 
to look into the living, throbbing, changing, and yet continuing cultural traditions of the rural folk of India in order to map the unity within a mosaic of such rich variety. Inspired by their uncle Robindranath, the artist brothers Abhinindranath and Gogonindranath started collecting ritual and handicraft objects made and used by rural folk. One of the first urban artists to be inspired by a folk manner of painting was Shunayoni Devi, sister to Abhinindranath and Gogonindranath. At about the same time, in the mid-twenties, Guru Shodai Dotto began to avidly collect folk art and craft objects from every nook and corner of undivided Bengal. This period, from the mid-twenties to the early thirties, was also the time of Gandhiji's call for the mobilization of the rural masses and Tagore's voicing of the necessity of rural reconstruction, causing the Indian intelligentsia to take cognizance of rural India. Pancho Bhut, 
Jamini Rai's shift to Bengal pot painting for stylistic inspiration and Nandalal Bosu's transition from the high art of Indian history to the living traditions of rural folk art can be better understood in terms of the political cultural ethos of the time. Nandulal Bosu's association with both Gandhiji and Rabindranath Tagore is well documented. What is not so well known is Avonindranath Tagore's late life experiments with folk styles. He had long been known as a creative writer, interested in the Bengali folk versions of Puranic myths. But it was only in 1930 when reproductions of the small paintings of the Chondi Mongol series began to be published that people realized that Obanindranath was equally interested in folk arts. During the 30s and 40s, the national movement started examining modern Western political, economic and social models for post-independence.
of the academically trained urban artist for folk sources to draw upon, the Bengal ports proved to be a gold mine. There were, of course, other resource bases like folk toys, and figured textiles. The most significant thing to happen to painting and sculpture in independent India has been the emergence of individual artists with distinctive identities within their community art traditions. The main factor behind this change has been technological. The use of paper and non-traditional pigments changed the paintings of Mithila in Bihar and the Varlis of Maharashtra. The catalytic agents of this change were concerned and enlightened outsiders like Popul Jayakar, Bhaskar Kulkarni and Manu Parekh together with the state support which they secured. Another significant development in the art of free India has been the discovery of tribal art traditions as distinct from folk traditions. The pioneering work in this field was done by J. Swaminathan and K.C.S. Panikkar. However, they took from tribal arts only those elements which struck responsive chords within their own sensibilities. Swaminathan is to be remembered not only for building up an important collection of tribal arts, but also for selecting and encouraging talented people
to emerge as individual artists from within their anonymous traditions. Swaminathan was also in the forefront of those who began to regard talented folk and tribal artists as contemporary Indian artists at par with academically trained urban artists. The greatest accolades for demonstrating how to reinvigorate folk traditions and select relevant elements from them should go to the thinker, teacher, and artist, K.G. Subramaniam. He is responsible for the revival of mural painting. Terracotta sculpture and painting on glass. Subramaniam has shown how aspects of folk art can be transformed in the creations of modern Indian urban artists. Thanks to these pioneers, we now have a better understanding of India's tribal and folk heritage. <laughs> We hope that this film will re-establish the link between Lokojo or Deshojo, the folk and the tribal, with the Margyo or Shastriyo, the high and the urban, expressions of art that existed in pre-colonial India. Dachne so biran karai chi Ganga haluman ke yo Unaka charaniya me Siramala babai chi Unaka charaniya me Siramala gabai chi yo Apachim subiran karai chhe Nira sulata na ke ho Autar subiran karai chhe Araja surama sale sake